We're going to start in John chapter 3. So somebody, we're going to be in John chapter 3 for a while. So somebody read, when you get there, read verses 1 through 8. That was the, I was looking for that. <laughs> Where is the thing? No, I know you have it. No, no, no. She's going to get it. <laughs> John chapter 3, 1 to 8. So if somebody gets there, just go ahead and read it. After dark one evening, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to speak with Jesus. Teacher, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs and proof enough that God is with you. Jesus replied, I assure you, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, The truth is, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from, or where it is going, you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Okay. So, Nicodemus is a leader of the Jewish religion. A theologian. You can, you can pick your favorite Bible teacher on TV, or at, if you're a seminary guy from seminary, and you could think of Nicodemus as being one of those guys. Right. Well studied, understands Judaism, understands what we call the Old Testament, understands all the other stuff that Judaism added to it. He comes to Jesus, and he wants to talk to Jesus about what people are talking about with Jesus, right? You do great things. You're obviously a teacher. So that's how Nicodemus opens it up. That's what he wants to talk about. And what does Jesus say? Jesus says, you're dead, and you can't even see the kingdom of God. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. He says, you can't even see it. You're dead. You need to be spirit birthed. That's it. Now, Jesus didn't talk about his miracles. Jesus didn't talk about him being a great teacher. Jesus didn't talk about any of those things. Jesus at his first opportunity in talking to a leader of Judaism, said, you are dead, you are, and you need to be spirit birthed. So if we say, all right, if spiritual death is the real problem, we should expect Jesus to go right after the real problem. That's what he does, right? He goes after the root problem. And in his first teaching in John, that's exactly what he does. He goes right for the root cause. He doesn't mess around the edges. He doesn't build up to it. He says, this is the problem. Now, Nicodemus partly understood what Jesus was talking about. Okay, He didn't take this as an analogy or some example. He said, how can I get back in the womb? He knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. He said, how, how can I do this? How can I be born again? How can I enter my mother's womb again? And he didn't say, oh, Jesus, you must be talking about some spiritual meaning or analogy, and so let's talk about something else. No, Nicodemus went right, stayed right with Jesus, right where he was. And, and some people say, well, you know, Nicodemus was kind of back-talking. Well, how can I do that? Mm. No, he wasn't. He was really questioning you say I have to be spirit. I have to be spirit born. How? How can I do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he asked the right question. The conversation is going to stay on track because Nicodemus is staying with Jesus as best he can, and and the answer is, and he was right with his answer. You can't do it. Okay. You can't spirit birth yourself. You can't crawl back into your mother's womb. You can't do it. 
And then Jesus comes in and says to them, people that are born of the Spirit, they're like the wind. You can see the effect of the wind. You can see the leaves rustling. You can hear the effect of the wind. But you don't know where it's coming from. In the physical realm, you can see the effect of the wind being there. But you can't see it, mm -hmm. and you can't see what's motivating it, and you can't see the direction that it's coming. The only way you know the wind is blowing from this direction is the tree's been this way. You can't see the wind coming. Okay? He says, people that are spirit birth are like that. What he's saying is, you can see their activity. You can see what, you, what they're doing, but you can't see what's empowering them to do it. You can see me laying my hands on people and them being healed. But you can't see the power that's making that happen. You don't see what's motivating me to pray for this person and not for this person. Mm -hmm. You don't see why I'm doing the things that I'm doing and saying the things that I'm saying. You say I'm a great teacher, but you don't even know why. Because you can't see the wind and you can't see the, the spirit man being motivated by the Holy Spirit. You see the effects of it. The trees rustling. The leaves f flying around. But you can't see it. Okay, that's what Jesus says. And, and he says, that's the way spirit-filled people are. That's the way spirit-birthed people are. They're like that. So, it begs the question when we read this passage, are we like that? Is our life like that? Can people figure out what's motivating us and what's driving us? Can they figure out why, that we're doing this because of this and this? Because of our childhood or because of our background or because of the theology that we've, we've, we've believed in or because of the teacher that's teaching us? Can they put it all together and figure out? Or when someone like Dave walks in and says, you got a spirit of infirmity on you. And they go, what? <laughs> How do you know that? Get it off me. <laughs> you want me to pray for you? Pray it off? Yeah, please do. They have no idea. They don't know. They don't understand that. When you walk in and you say, and when we pray for people, and the spirit starts moving, and we start prophesying and giving words of knowledge and words of wisdom and discernment flows, a lot of the people that we pray for the reason why they're coming here for prayer is because the people that they hang out with aren't like that. <laughs> and they don't understand how we know. We tell them the Holy Spirit's revealing and they go, okay. But they don't know what that means. They don't know the process. They don't know how it works. They just know, I came, these people told me all about myself, they prayed for me, and I was healed. So they see the results in the physical realm but they don't see how the Spirit is moving, how the Holy Spirit's moving, and they don't see how our human spirit is interacting with the Holy Spirit. They can't see any of that stuff. So, we are supposed to be different like that. That's what Jesus is saying. If you're spirit burst, if you're born again, you should be like the wind. People should not be able to tell what's motivating you, what's empowering you, they should just see the results. Mm -hmm. They should just see the things blowing around. Okay? Mm -hmm. And and if we're different than that, Jesus is setting a different standard. If we say, oh, well, I like to have everything in order, and I don't like to do that, and, you know, I like to just do line upon line, and you go, well, okay, but that kind of sounds like my professor in college, that kind of sounds like people in the world, and that doesn't sound anything at all like what Jesus said spirit birth people are. So maybe if you're if you are born again, if you are spirit birth, maybe you're just not experienced. Maybe you're like a baby. We may be saying, okay, I'm trying to get you to act like a spirit birth adult before I teach you to grow up in the spirit, maybe. Or maybe you don't know what we're talking about because what you experienced was a religious conversion, mm. not a birth of your human spirit. 
That's another possibility. So when we look at this and we begin to, to understand it in the context of what we were talking about last time, we begin to see that Jesus is establishing a central, core, important issue and item. And he's telling Nicodemus straight out, and Nicodemus understands what he's saying. 